It's the French Revolution and heads are gonna roll, so make sure the best heads roll right into your lap. In guillotine. Available at thewizardtower.com, guillotine is kind of a set collection game for two to five players. It takes uh, 30 minutes to play. It's very easy to learn, but it's a, it's a pretty fun one to play. Uh, the only thing in this tiny box is a deck of uh, noble cards. They're the ones that are, will be executed. And action cards, which will let you manipulate who gets executed when, so you can get the best heads possible. And then there's also going to be a, there's this fun little cardboard um, guillotine that sits on the table and does nothing but threaten to fall over. So how do you play guillotine? Well, the game takes place over three days, and each day 12 nobles from the noble deck will queue up in front of the guillotine. And the players, as the guillotine operators, will take turns collecting heads and add them to their score area. Each head is worth a number of points, and at the end of the three days, whoever has the most points wins. Additionally, on your turn, you will get a chance to play one action card. It's optional if you if you want to play it. And most of the action cards will allow you to rearrange the line in some way. Maybe somebody trips forward or uh, the queen's favor lets someone move backwards in the line. So the objective is to collect the most valuable heads by trying to rearrange things so that the most valuable heads end up at the front of the line on your turn. And once you play an action card or don't, you are required to take whatever uh, noble is at the front. And it could be a negative amount, it could be a very positive amount. It could have bonus effects like let you take a second head off the deck and get random points. Uh, it might let you draw extra action cards. But the day will end as soon as all as soon as the queue is empty. It could be 12, it could be more than 12 based on action cards. And once the day resets, everyone keeps the cards they have. You put 12 new nobles out at the guillotine and do that two more times. Now it might not occur to you until you get these cards laid out. 12 cards takes up a lot of table space. You're not playing uh, guillotine on a, a small table. So I've laid out uh, 12 nobles here just so you can take a look. We've got uh, the unpopular judge right there at the front. He's worth two points because no one likes him. The royal cartographer, the sheriff, the countess who's worth more points if you also collect the count. Uh, King Louis, he's worth five points. Uh, the landlord, there's some guards, and at the very end, we've got the innocent victim and the martyr, who are both worth negative points because no one wants them to die. Uh, you're a bad person for killing them, and everyone holds you responsible. Um, the clown up here at the front is a negative two, but he's actually uh, he goes into somebody else's score pile when you collect him, so he's not he's not uh, a negative for you. So you actually want to take him because he gives someone else negative two points. Um, a lot of the characters have uh, some bonus text. Uh, for example, the captain of the guard here, when you uh, collect him, you take another noble from the deck and add to the end of the line. So the line gets longer. Now there's 13 people to collect. Uh, Robespierre here, uh, if you collect Robespierre, the day ends immediately. I once played a game where Robespierre was the first one out, and the first player decided, yeah, they'll take Robespierre. They took, uh, they got three points for him, the day ended. And we shuffled all these cards back in the deck, drew 12 more out, and then played basically two rounds of guillotine uh, instead of three. But that's just how it goes. Uh, there's a couple of cards in the action deck that also let you end the day immediately if you play them. So it's a very simple game, like I said. So I'm just going to deal out a couple hands of cards and just play a couple of rounds so you can... I mean, you, I'm sure you get the gist of it, but so you can understand like exactly what's going on here. Alright, so everyone starts the game with five action cards, and on subsequent days you'll just have whatever cards you already have. There's no, like, discarding and redrawing hands of cards. Um, so, we're just going to play a couple rounds here so you can see exactly what's going on if you haven't got the point already. So right here at the front of the line we have an unpopular judge. He's worth two points. He's the... He's probably the best that we can get because the cards that you play will say things like this and they'll specify that you move a noble either exactly two places forward in line or up to two places in line. Uh, I mean a couple of cards might be more than that. There's one that moves back four spaces. Um, 
Uh, however, the I can't do anything with this line right now because as you can see on the popular judge, as long as he's at the front of the line, no action cards can be played. So if he's at the front of the line, you're taking him if it's your turn because you can't do anything about it. So I can't play an action card at all. So I take the unpopular judge. And I add my score pile. And then at the end of your turn, whether you play the card or not, you still draw another action card. And then everyone else slides down. Or you can move the guillotine forwards, but just because I have the camera set up right there, I'm going to move the line. Um, some other cards you might encounter are things like this one here, uh, church support. Uh, the, the characters, the nobles, all fall into, I think, four or five color categories. Uh, they represent different parts of the society, I guess. Um, so church support here gives you a plus one for every blue noble you collect. Now there's no blue nobles in the line, they're the clergy. Uh, there's also uh, one of those for, uh, actually this one here is for uh, gray, uh, sorry, green nobles, which are sort of the merchants, I think. Uh, there's one for um, military support, that's red characters. And I don't know if there's one for purple characters, which are like the, the actual like nobles. Um, but I don't need to play any of those because I don't have any of those characters yet. So the clown, if I take him, someone else will get it. So I could just give him to the unpopular judge character over here and he's effectively at zero points. But what I'm going to do is play clothing swap. So what cl clothing swap says, choose any noble in the line and discard it and then replace it with the top card from the deck. So I don't really care about being spiteful about the clown. I'm going to discard the clown. Now discarding doesn't mean like they're out of the game. That means uh, at the end of the day, the clown and any other discarded nobles will get shuffled back into the deck and then get put back out. They won't miss their chance to be executed, don't worry. So I'll replace him with the duke. So he's a, a purple character, purple noble. He's worth three points. And then I collect him because that's how it goes. And I'm going to turn and draw a card to replace the one I played. Although, as I said, even if I don't play one, you still draw one. And everyone gets shuffled forward. Now I want to play one that moves nobles. Uh, well, they don't have a good one. So instead, I'm going to use this one here. So Fountain of Blood just says it's worth two points. So just I just play this in front of myself, and it's worth she's worth two points. There's cards that are like that. They're just put this card out, you get points. Put this card out, and you have negative points. Things like that. Um, I will take the Royal Cartographer for one point and draw a card. Back over to here. So I'm going to play Pushed. So this says move a noble forward exactly two places in line. So back here we got uh, two spaces back we have King Louis the 16th and so uh, I guess Robespierre in the fourth position is going to give uh, King Louis a little push right into the path of the guillotine. How does that work? I'm not really sure. doesn't really matter. So I collect King Louis the 16th for five points. And I draw a card. And then everyone gets shuffled back down. A lot of the time you'll have characters like the, the sheriff here who will just sit at the front of the line and no one will collect him because everyone wants to get better cards uh, put in there. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to play this one just for fun. So this is Confusion in Line. So I'm going to choose the next player. And before, just before they collect their next noble, I'm going to shuffle the, uh, the line. So I'll take the sheriff because I have to. And then everything gets shuffled down like this. But we know that that is not the order the line's going to be in. So this, this player here has no reason to spend cards that move people around. But what he can do is play extra cart. Extra cart says you add three more nobles to the end of the line. So he wants he wants more uh, more options. So we've added the lieutenant, which is two points, the colonel for three points. They're both red characters and a second martyr. So we take these cards 
All right, give him a little shovel. And we'll deal from the front. So this player is going to collect the landlord. And then we have the lieutenant, captain of the guard, one of the martyrs. Robespierre somehow ended up back in the exact same place he started. Lieutenant, another lieutenant, colonel, the other martyr, the victim, and the countess is now at the end of the line. So this player over here has to take the landlord. Which is fine, it's two points, could have been a martyr. Uh, and they will draw a card. And back over here, so... Uh, I mean, you're getting the point of it. We'll finish the day, why not? Uh, so the first one there for two points isn't bad, but the Captain of the Guard lets you grab another one. So I'm going to play Military Might right here. Let's you move uh, one specifically Red Noble up to two places forward. So I'm going to move the Captain of the Guard forward one space and then collect him. And he says, oh, I thought he got, let me take another one. He adds another noble to the end of the line. That's all right. So we got the master spy at the end. Now the master spy is uh, interesting. He's worth four points, which is a pretty good amount. I mean, five is the most. But his text on him says, after any player plays an action card. So basically every time someone plays an action card, he gets moved to the end of the line. So no matter where he is, he moves to the end of the line. So until he's the only... Uh, character at the front of the line because people didn't play action cards no one's taken him you can't play a card that moves in the front and take him because by playing the card you've effectively moved him you've triggered him to the end of the line so unless he started off close to the front and no one played action cards and let him get up there then someone could take him uh, odds are he's going to be the last uh the last character taken however third in line here is Robespierre and as I mentioned before as soon as someone takes him the day ends immediately so unless someone skips him over or moves him around he's gonna end the day uh, did I draw a card for this guy no okay so this one here these are the Duke and the Sheriff he's not any cards that make any of those better oh yeah he does so we can play civic support as I showed you before that makes my green characters uh, worth one more point so now my sheriff is worth two points. Uh, but I have to take the lieutenant. Which is fine, it's two points. And we have one of the martyrs for negative one points. So this character does not want negative one. However, he's basically either going to take the negative one or Robespierre and end the day. I mean, three points is better than nothing. So he's going to play... Nothing. He's not going to play a card. It doesn't matter. Uh, sorry, no. He's, sorry, yeah, he's going to move. He's going to play Stumble. And uh, he's going to stumble Robespierre right to the front of the line. And then collect him, which ends the day. So all the rest of these cards will get shuffled back into the deck, along with the clown. And we would deal out 12 new cards uh, to start day two. And then you do that for day two, the same thing we just did. And... Uh, for day three. The other card that I was going to show you that ends the day is the Scarlet Pimpernel. All he says is you play him and end of your turn the day ends. So there's ways to like the game won't necessarily take the full time uh, collecting all 12 nobles. And actually this character here had an extra another uh, no someone had another extra cart yeah to add three more nobles to to the end of the line. So I, I think there's only two of those. So I guess potentially in one day you could collect, what, 18 nobles? Plus the captain of the guard adds one. So 19 nobles in one day? I've never seen it happen. I've never seen... I mean, 15 is pretty rare. But yeah, at the end of the day, you'd add up all your points. Uh, keep in mind there are negative points and uh, things like civic support that make certain colors uh, worth more. And whoever's the most points wins guillotine and is the... I guess probably crowned the best uh, guillotine operator. So yeah, guillotine is just a, a fun little card game. It's sort of a set collection if you're looking for the nobles of the same color, or I mean the uh, even the I haven't come out. The palace guards are worth a point 
for every palace guard that you have, including themselves. So one palace guard was one point, but if you have two palace guards, they're each worth two points. I think there's five or six of them, so that can be that can be uh, get a little out of, out of control, which also gives your opponents a reason to try and take palace guards. If you're getting a lot of them, they're going to want to slow you down. Um, it's obviously not a serious game. It's, it's not meant to make light of killing people obviously i think that should be very obvious the the art on the cards is really uh cartoony and, and I, I like looking at it the card the art on the uh, action cards is okay some of it it is just like the the character art is so big and and like fun to look at like these sort of caricatures the the action cards are also like small like the art is so so plain that uh, it it seems a little like it's obviously the same art style but it it seems a little uh is less in some way than than the other cards but, i mean that's fine you're not looking at the action cards you're collecting a tableau of all the nobles so that's what you're you're looking at and everything is very straightforward like there's nothing you never need to check the rule book the only thing i ever check the rule book for is how many cards uh, each player starts with, because I always think it's three and not five. Other than that, like, you put 12 nobles out, you play an extra card or not. You collect a noble, you draw a card whether you played one or not. Do that till all the nobles are gone, do that two more times. It's very simple, but it's it's not really like take that game, but there is an element of, uh, like, you know, you could make someone lose a noble, or... Uh, lose cards in their hand, or the way that you shuffle the, the nobles around to try and make someone else take a bad card. There's not a, really a aggression, but it's definitely like a, a level of competition that is not not so strong that uh, I think you'd be put off by this if you didn't like that in other games. I mean, and if you like uh, flimsy cardboard things that just stand on the table and take up space and are basically the reason the box is the size that it is. Well, there you go. I will point out that I, I know that the box is not great looking. If you saw this on the shelf, as I did, you might think, as I did, that this, you know, what could this possibly be about? There's no indication on the box like that the art looks like what it does but this is one that you definitely shouldn't judge by the cover and and i hope that maybe if you have seen it on the shelf you'll think oh i should give that another shot and pick that up because it's just a fun little filler game and i think it uh you might enjoy it so if you did i hope uh that you do enjoy it if it's not for you i understand maybe you don't like cutting off the heads of cartoon people i mean no one actually gets their head cut off but Anyway, that's all f I can tell you about Guillotine, so that's it for me. So thanks for watching. Uh, my name, again, is Jason, and we will see you next time.